New York City is the largest metropolitan area for AIDS. More babies die of AIDS in this city than any other city anywhere. The most dangerous school system in the whole United States. He will do nothing in the way of judgment until he warns his servants. Surely the Lord God will do nothing but first reveals his secrets unto his servants, the prophets. But we are watchmen. We're called to be watchmen. He reveals his secrets. He does nothing. Early before the calamity comes, he said, I sent men early, rising early. God said, I rose before the judgment. I sent watchmen, shepherd, and prophets to you, and I warned you. And he's rising early now. This is an early rising of God's spirit to warn us before the calamity comes. New York ignored the Lord's warnings in 1972 to 1974. They started building huge skyscrapers. Wall Street added hundreds of thousands. Well, it was God knocking on the door. God was warning this city once again against its greed, against its pride. It would not listen. It never has listened. Still pushing God out of his school. Still killing its babies by the millions. Still flaunting its homosexuality. New Yorkers just blink at it. But you see, when God called us to New York City, I remember it clearly. Find a remnant. Build that remnant into the image of Jesus. Get them ready for the Lord's coming. And then warn of judgments that are about to come. They're going to come fast and swift. And before they come, I'll warn you, I'll tell you, and you must warn. And God spoke to all of our hearts, yes, that's the mandate. And we see a church here now full of people walking in the image of Jesus. We are beginning to see a remnant, not just in this church. God has a remnant in this city in many churches filled with the Holy Spirit, loving Jesus with all their hearts. But now it's time to warn more than ever. There will be more and more warnings, prophetic utterances. God loves his people. He loves his church. And because he's so concerned about us, so loves us, he'll talk to us about our neighborhoods, about our going on the subways, the buses, the trains. He's concerned about everything. If he counts the very hairs on our head, is he not concerned about us? But if the watchman sees the trouble coming, and he sees the danger coming, and he doesn't warn, he said, that trouble will come, but I'll hold that prophet or that servant responsible, and I'll have the blood on his own hands. Brother, sister, if we don't anchor it in the Word of God, you're going to be leaving all kinds of foolishness. You're going to be tossed by every wind and wave of false doctrine, and you're going to hear all kinds of prophecies that sound good, that sound spectacular, but not an ounce of truth behind it because it's not anchored in the Word of God when there are no more men of God in our government and they become expedient and they turn to politics rather than what is called righteousness. Instead of doing what is right, they do what is expedient. This is exactly what happened in Jerusalem. Jerusalem after that didn't just collapse. Sodomites began to come to the fore. Sodomites filled the land, the scripture said. Evil of all kinds broke out. Rehoboam became one of the most evil kings in history. The city full of sodomites, homosexuality, and it began to slowly drift down. And my bowels are literally boiling because I know, I know what God did to Jerusalem. He's about to do to New York. Hey, what about the church? What about us? What about my job, my children? I believe that God himself is going to come down and become our refuge in this time of trouble. We're going into a fire, folks. There's going to be suffering. Some of you are going to be unemployed, and yet God's going to see you through. And in your furnace, you're going to see Jesus like you've never seen him in your life. There's going to be a vision of Christ revealed to your heart. Woe to them to go down to Egypt for help and stay on horses or trust in chariots because they are many, and in horsemen because they are very strong. But they look not unto the Holy One of Israel, neither seek the Lord. Yet he also is wise and will bring evil and will not call back his words, he will arise against the house of the evildoers and against the help of them that work iniquity. Now the Egyptians are men and not God. Their horses are flesh and not spirit. When the Lord shall stretch out his hand, both he that helps shall fall and he that's helping shall fall together. They shall all fail together. For thus saith the Lord, for this hath the Lord spoken to me. 
like as the lion and the young lion roaring on his prey, when a multitude of shepherds is called forth against him, he will not be afraid of their voice, nor abase himself for the noise of them. So shall the Lord of hosts come down to fight for Mount Zion and for the hill thereof. God shall come down and fight for Zion. Hallelujah. Beloved, get this in your heart good. Thank God for America. Thank God for New York. Thank God for your home. But you and I are born in Zion. This is not our home. We are foreigners. We are strangers. We are aliens. We are passing through. You have the Holy Spirit. And God says, I will never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I'll go with you to the end of the world. And he'll not let you starve. Somewhere, somehow, God is going to come down. And he is going to fight for Zion. And nobody going to stick a knife in your back. Nobody going to put a bullet in your heart. Because God's going to fight our enemies. He's going to come down and fight our enemies. I will have an island of safety there because God is in that furnace with me. Hallelujah.